In this video, we're going to add power-ups to our arcade shooter game. We made this game in another tutorial, so you can go and check that out or you can download its finished project from the description. So let's open up that project and here we are going to add two power-ups. One which will give you a spread shot ability so you can fire extra bullets and one that will make you invincible. We need sprites for these power-ups which I have in this asset package. So I'll drag it into Game Maker, hit yes, then add all and then import. You can download this file from the description. Let's make the spread shot power-up first. We need an object for that so let's make an object here. And I'll call this obj power-up spread. And let's give this object the spread power-up sprite. Now this is the power-up that the player can collect. And I'm going to make it so that when it spawns, it starts moving towards the center of the room. So for that, let's go and add the create event. And for coding these objects, you can use either GML visual or code. This tutorial will show you both. Now in the events, let's first of all set the speed of the power up to 1 so it moves but slowly. And then let's set its direction to point towards the center of the room. So we get the center of the room simply by dividing the width and height of the room by 2. That's simple enough, but if the power up goes outside the room, say if the player doesn't collect it, then it's gonna continue existing and that may cause memory leaks. So as soon as it goes outside the room, we want to destroy it. For that, let's go and add the other outside room event and here just destroy the instance. This object is done. So for now, let's go into the game room and place the power up here manually. Later in the video, we are gonna work on spawning this automatically. So if you run the game, you're gonna see the power up is there and it moves towards the center of the room, but you can't collect it yet. So let's work on that. Let's go into obj player and here add the create event. We want to make a variable that can tell us whether a power up is active and in that case which power up is active. So we're gonna make a variable simply called power up and by default it will be set to zero. So the way I'm gonna make it work is that if this is zero it means that no power up is active. If this is one it means that the spread power up is active. And if it's true, it means that the ghost power up is active. This way, after this tutorial is over, you can go ahead and add power ups 3 and 4 and so on and continue to expand this system. Now to allow the player to collect this power up, let's go ahead and add a collision event with that power up object. So when the player collides with this power up, we want to activate that power up then set an alarm for that power up to be deactivated after 10 seconds and destroy the power up instance. So to achieve all that in this event, first of all, let's change the power up variable to one. After that, let's set the alarm zero event to 10 into 60 frames. So because there are 60 frames in one second, this means we are telling the alarm zero event to run after 10 seconds. Then let's also set the ship's color to yellow to indicate that the power up is active. And finally, let's destroy the other instance, which is the power up. If you're using GML visual, then make sure you click on the arrow on your destroy instance action and you select other. So that's how it's going to destroy the other instance. If you don't do this, then it's just going to destroy the player itself. With this done, let's go and add the alarm zero event where the power up will be deactivated. So here we just want to set the power up variable to zero, then set the ship's color to white and then it's alpha or transparency to one. So we are also resetting the alpha because we will be changing this for the other power up. So in game, this will allow you to collect the power up and after 10 seconds, it will be deactivated. But while that power up is active, it doesn't do anything special right now. So let's make that work. While this power up is active, we should be able to shoot extra bullets. So let's go to that part of the code where we shoot. This is found in the step event. Here we have a condition where we check if the left mouse button is pressed and then we create a bullet instance. In the same pass, we're gonna check if our first power up is active. And in that case, we are just gonna create some extra bullets. In the same block, let's go and add a condition to check if power up is equal to one. If it is, then we are going to create a new instance. So this will be an instance of obj bullets. We'll make it at the ship's location. It will be in the instances layer. 
and after making the instance, we're gonna store its reference in a new local variable that's simply called bullet. So through this reference that we are storing in a variable, we want to modify the direction of the new bullet that we have created. So just after this, I'm gonna shift its direction by 10 degrees, so it goes off in a slightly different direction. And then we just want another bullet going in the other direction. So let's make a new instance for that. And we're going to store its reference in the same variable. And then in the same manner, we're going to shift its direction, but by minus 10 degrees. So run the game, collect the power up, and you'll have the spread shot ability. With that, our first power up is done, but it's not spawning automatically. We had to place it in the room ourselves. So we're gonna make it so a power up spawns once every 20 seconds, but it only spawns when you destroy a rock. So for counting down those seconds, let's go into obj game and here open the create event. We're gonna make a new variable called power up underscore time, which is gonna count how many seconds are remaining for a power up to spawn. We're gonna set this variable to 10, so the first power up spawns 10 seconds after the game begins. To count it down every frame, let's go and add the step event. Here we're gonna modify the same variable that we just made and we're gonna reduce it by the delta time value divided by 1 million. So delta time is the amount of time that has passed between the previous frame of the game and the current frame, but it's in microseconds so we need to convert that into seconds by dividing it by 1 million. So by doing it this way, this variable is gonna go down by one every one second. So in 10 seconds, it'll become zero and then it'll go negative. So once this variable is negative, that's our signal for spawning a power up. For that, let's go into obj rock because we want to spawn a power up when a rock is destroyed. And that happens in the collision event with obj bullets because of course bullets destroy rocks. So at the top of this event, let's add this. We're gonna check if the power up time variable, which is from obj game, is less than zero. If it is, we want to spawn a power up. So first of all, we're gonna run the choose function so that it chooses a random power up from the multiple power up objects that you can have. Of course, at the moment, we only have one power up, so that's all we're gonna mention here. And the power up object that is selected is gonna be stored in the obj variable. So we then use that variable to create a new instance from it. We make this instance at the rocks position in the instances layer. So this will spawn the power up. And after that, we should reset the power up timer so that the next power up can spawn 20 seconds after this. So we're gonna set the obj game dot power up time variable to 20. Now, before you test this, go into the game room and make sure you delete the power up that you manually placed there and then run the game, keep shooting at rocks, and in 10 seconds, you will get your new power up. Now, as a quick bonus, before we add the second power up, let's make it so you can see how many seconds are remaining before your current power up is deactivated. We want to draw those number of seconds just above the player ship. So for that, let's go into the obj player object and add the draw event. Now, the first thing you should do in a draw event is use the draw self function so that the instance itself is drawn. In this case, we do want the player ship to be drawn, so we're gonna use that. Then let's check if the alarm zero event is active by checking if the alarm value is greater than zero. So we are checking the alarm because the alarm is what disables the power up. So we are just gonna check whether that alarm is active and then we are just gonna draw that alarm's value to the screen so we can see how much time is remaining. Before we draw the value, let's add this to change the horizontal alignment of the text that we are about to draw to center so that it's centered above the player ship. And then let's use this function to draw the alarm value to the screen. So the value that we are drawing is the alarm value divided by 60 and then rounded. We are doing this because the alarm value by default will be in frames because it will tell us how many frames are remaining for that alarm event to be triggered. But what we want to show to the player is seconds. So we are dividing the alarm value by 60 to convert it from frames into seconds. And then we are rounding it because we don't want to display a decimal value. We want to show a simple whole number. 
We are drawing this text just at the ship's location but 60 pixels above it. Then at the end make sure you reset the horizontal alignment back to left. Run the game, collect a power up and you're gonna see the number of seconds that are remaining before that power up runs out. The font that you see on the text for those seconds will depend on what font you've already used in the game. So in my project I used this font in the main menu that we made in another tutorial. And that's why this is the font I see. You may see something different. Let's add the second power up now which is a ghost power up that makes you invincible. We already have a sprite for this so we need to make an object. For the object I'm just gonna go to the spread power up object that we made in this video and let's right click on that and duplicate it. Let's change its name to obj power up ghost and also change its sprite to the ghost power up sprite. That's all we need for that object so let's see how the player will interact with this. Let's go into obj player. Here we already have a collision event with the spread power up so let's duplicate that as well and make it a collision event with the ghost power up. So this is the event where the player comes in contact with a ghost power up. So when it does that we want the power up variable to be set to 2 instead of 1. And then for the visual effect we're not gonna change its color to yellow let's keep it white. But instead let's make it a bit transparent by using a low alpha value. So if you collect this power up it will be activated. The ship will become a bit transparent. So let's code what happens while this power up is active. Because this makes you invincible, all it needs to do is disable the interaction between a player and a rock. So in the player we have a collision event with obj rock. So in this event, at the very top, let's add a condition to check if power up 2 is active, which is our ghost power up. And in that case, let's exit out of the event. This means that if power up 2 is active, then the rest of this event, which destroys the player, is not going to run meaning nothing is gonna happen to the player. Now we also want this power up to be spawned and because that happens in obj rock, let's go into that object and let's open the collision event with obj bullet. Here in the choose function we can just add it as a second option and so it'll be spawned. But for now just to test it, I'm gonna replace the spread power up with the ghost power up. So only that power up spawns for now. And let's go into the game and test it. In 10 seconds I get the ghost power up from a rock when I collect it, I become a bit transparent and I can go through rocks. So with the power up tested and working, you can go back into the rock object and you can then add the spread power up as the second option in your choose function. And with that, our power up system is working but not necessarily finished because you can now go and add your own power ups. So if you do add any new power ups or if you have ideas for power ups that can be added to this game, let me know down in the comments. Also check out the many more game maker tutorials that we have for you and I'll see you in the next video.